Today, we're going to be talking about Nintendo Switch Online and the most recent update that went live for base tier subscribers. So you do not need to be an expansion pack subscriber to enjoy any of these games. These are all from the Super Nintendo era. Interestingly enough, typically we see a mix up of NES and Game Boy titles mixed in with SNES. These are all SNES, but I guess you could say Super Famicom because two of the titles were only ever released in Japan and are just now being brought to the States and worldwide for the first time in history. So you can first see what said games are over from Nintendo of America, which reads three Super NES classic titles are now live for Nintendo Switch online members. Wrecking Crew 98, Super R-Type, that's the one I'm most pumped for, and Amazing Ibrake, I think is how you say that, could be wrong. And the update has been live for about 24 hours at the time that you're watching this video. And what I wanna do next is hop into some gameplay of these games together. I can definitely share some nostalgia for Super R-Type and maybe check out the gameplay of the other two briefly. So before we dive into that, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your bell notification to join Summer Nation if you're new here. And with that, we'll hop right into some gameplay. So as mentioned, two out of the three games Games that we are looking at here and I will turn off my camera so you guys can see the artwork for each of them were never released in the US and I'm actually pumped for Super R-Type because I do have nostalgia for that but the other two uh, I have no clue what they have to offer but we're going to start with Wrecking Crew 98 because apparently uh, Mario's in this game and that's news to me I think Wrecking Crew the original may have been out on the NES here and I, I guess it just comes with both that's pretty cool um, was out on the NES if I'm not mistaken it may or may not have been I never picked it up myself but the Wrecking Crew 98 was never released other than in Japan, um, as far as I'm aware, and you can obviously see that with the menu and things. So one of the cool perks of the service while Nintendo's touting these up as classic titles, I don't know that they're the best picks from missing games from the SNES library, but uh, you technically get to play games that you probably would never otherwise come across unless if you're just like a super hardcore collector where you're going out and buying uh, region specific games that weren't released around the world. Uh, so I guess there's that part at least. And it looks like this is kind of something of a of a puzzle game uh, from the looks of it kind of like maybe Tetris isn't a good um, analogy, but in a way because you're kind of just trying to line up uh, what would be like um, a better what, what's one of those like gem games, you know, that you have to like line up all of the same color gems. Uh, I'm kind of getting those vibes from it, but uh, not super great at these games. And you're going to have to bear with me just because I'm not entirely sure what the goal of this is other than probably just to line up as many similar colors as you can. Um, or maybe maybe you have to like progress upwards, but I don't exactly see how to do that. Um, so hopefully we don't get totally dominated here. But anyway, let me know in the comments down below how you guys feel about getting like, you know, games we never had before. Would you rather see more of these and, and get games for the first time to be able to play? Or are you more of the mindset, oh, we can climb up the ladders here? Well, that makes quite the difference. Um, are you more of the mindset that Nintendo should definitely be doing things like releasing more of the classics uh, that we did have released here once upon a time first? Okay, so I wonder how I jump. Oh, I can jump. Okay, so you got a little bit of platforming action going on here. You guys, if you know the gameplay loop for this, you might uh, know that I'm doing something very wrong. I don't know that I am or not. So um, anyway, we'll learn together with this one. But uh, if, I, I'm, I'm going to say like this will be the type of game that, if, like, you know, if you're a hardcore puzzle game fan, you might like really get into this. But uh, so far for me, not exactly like the most enticing style of gameplay. But hey, we're playing something with Mario that was never released uh, in the US before. So that's pretty cool in and of itself. And I am a fan of some of the, like seeing some different titles that, you know, we maybe never would have had the opportunity to play otherwise. But at the same time, uh, knowing that there's licensed games that Nintendo's just kind of choosing not to pay for to bring over right now, like Goof Troop and Mickey Mouse games and, you know, uh, uh, Star Wars games. Like I, there's so many SNES classics that I would take over these ones uh, other than Super R-Type, which uh, maybe this is a good segue. I guess we can do, uh, we don't have to go to Super R-Type. We'll briefly check out this one. Um, and then I don't even remember the name of this. I know I read it towards the intro, but, uh, this one looked like more of like a battle and brawl type of game. Now, this is the base tier update for April. We're in the middle of the month right now. So there is a slight hope that, um, maybe there's a, there's a chance that we get an expansion pack update as well. Um, I'm not entirely holding out hope for that. Sometimes Nintendo just does one tier and not the other. Uh, I really think that we should get at least one update per month for each tier because that just seems like what makes sense for a subscription service. Uh, but at the same time, you know, and then yeah, I saw somebody post in the comments on on the, uh, the on this update, like a screenshot of Metroid Zero Missions. And I oh, my gosh, if we got that on GBA, that would like completely 
uh, immediately add so much value to the expansion pack for me. Like, I absolutely want to replay uh, Metroid Zero Mission again. If you guys aren't familiar, it's a remake of the original Metroid game and done so much better. Like, they fully modernized it for the, you know, GBA era and added in, like, all of the enhancements kind of of Metroid Fusion, like, all the way up to that point in time. But, uh, no, he got the heart, so... Uh, I'm a little bit confused on my attacks here. Okay, that definitely looks like a stronger attack, but I wonder if I can use it all the time or not. Like, I don't know if I'm just trying to take away his health bar. It kind of looks like maybe I am. Um, or if it's like I have to, like, get him out of this, like, arena fighter style. Now, see, now, I did that attack once before. Now I'm not doing it again. So maybe that was my special, and you have to be kind of more conservative with those. But anyway, um, you know, update-wise, I really want to see some more GBA love. I really want to see some... Uh, some N64 love, like these games, you know, it it's cool to throw them into the to the collection of online and get some uh, some games here for the first time. But that's you know we'll we'll hop out of this one. Not not it's it doesn't feel good mechanically. I'll put it that way. Like if you're if you're gonna play a fighting game, you want like everything to feel very responsive. Um, especially like if you're into just like a Smash Bros style game or something like that. Obviously, this is well before the era of Smash Bros. But you had the like you want you want things to feel a little bit more responsive than I did with that particular uh, game, but this one is Super R Type is actually what I'm most excited to play because I do have some level of nostalgia for this game. Um, I did own it back in the day, and I believe I sold it. Like I mean, shout outs to the to the uh, trade in companies that just completely took all of my old classic collection, and then I paid like triple price to get them back later on. And I never I never went back and and bought Super R Type again. I don't think I'll have to go check for sure, but. Um, you know, to think what I sold some of the games for that, it, like, if you look up their prices now, I was in a retro game store the other day and saw, like, Mega Man X2. Granted, it was in really good condition, but just the cartridge alone is being sold for, like, $179. And I had excellent condition Mega Man X 1 through 3 on the SNES, no problem. And I was like, gosh, what did I do, you know? But at the time, when you're a kid and the N64 comes out, and then, you know, Super Mario 64 is the hot new ticket item, and you got to trade in your stuff if you're going to want to get it. Well, that's that's what I fell into. So, um, but you see, obviously, you know, side scrolling uh, space shooter with Super R type, nothing that's like reinventing the wheel, but I do think Super R type is like one of the best versions of this type of game. So, um, if you are a fan of, of these type of games, I think you will absolutely love Super R type. Uh, some of the difficulty in this game, though, as you ramp up, and of course, there are difficulty settings. It gets serious. I mean, there's definitely some some complexity, and then you can't touch things like as you just saw there. And I believe we just go back to the start every time. I could be wrong. There could be like uh, checkpoints or save points or something. But um, the other thing that I love is like those how you see different beams. You'll get way more powerful as as you actually uh, acquire different power ups and things throughout the map. So uh, tons of fun with Super R Type. I'm really glad to see this one hit the service, but. You know, you just can't help but reflect on everything else that Nintendo could uh, could be adding in that they're kind of just holding back on. And I get the reason why. Uh, don't get me wrong. Like the reason why is is Nintendo wants to slowly drip feed update this service because they don't want to front load a subscription service with everything you want. And the reason is is because if you play everything you want and it's all there all at once, we have all the N64 games, Donkey Kong 64, Diddy Kong Racing, all the stuff that fans want to play. Well, once you play through it and you got a chance to play everything you kind of wanted all at once, you're not really incentivized to stay a subscriber anymore. And Nintendo knows that. And uh, I still think with the expansion pack, we should see them be a little bit more aggressive considering that that is uh, only an annual purchase option, meaning you cannot purchase that monthly. Uh, you could just grab a, a month of the base tier and, and ditch it the next month. The expansion pack, that's not possible. So with that in mind, I mean, I would love to see a little bit more uh, frequency and support from that, but Imagine if we didn't have Game Boy Family of Systems from the, the 2023 Direct, and we're just, we're dying again, so we'll probably call it here pretty soon, but imagine, uh, you know, if we didn't have this extra library of systems, it, it would really be bare bones on NSO, and you could argue it still is pretty bare bones. Um, not to mention, they're totally acting like Sega Genesis isn't a thing, if you think about it. I mean, we are just so few and far between on that library of games. I honestly think you're better off just getting that... Um, that Genesis game collection that's out there, because that actually still has quite a few Genesis games that we don't have on NSO yet. Uh, granted, uh, I know there's some emulation issues with that, and I haven't gone through and spent enough time in each of those to really verify that myself, but I've definitely seen people say that those games don't all run um, ideal. So you do love to see NSO gets things like online play. Now, of course, like we don't really get online play for like the SNES and stuff. 
um, too much. But I, as far as like N64, Game Boy Advance, and like some of these classics that you would have never had online play, it's, it's pretty cool to see Nintendo work that into the game code and actually update it with that. So they do a lot of cool things with NSO. And, you know, as somebody who went through virtual console, while I'm not the biggest fan of like always having a subscription that you have to pay monthly, in order to play your games like in a perfect world you just want to own everything as as a physical game collector i try to do that as much as possible um but i will say that there is definitely a large chunk of games that i play on the switch that i would not have purchased in a virtual console format so there it does have its its appeal in in, in that own way and as long as nintendo doesn't get out of hand with the price point and we're just going to keep dying in that same place so as long as Nintendo doesn't get out of hand with the price point, I feel like it's pretty much fair. So anyway, let me know in the comments down below if you guys have any level of nostalgia for any of the games. Uh, Super R-Type, clearly I'm rusty on the skills, but I would love to uh, to spend some more time in this one. This is definitely the highlight for me. Um, I may check out the other two a little bit more, but uh, you know, let me know if you're excited for any of the new releases, what you think of the state of NSO right now, and are you hopeful we get another update in the month of April? Do you think we'll see an expansion pack tier one as well? Or do you think this is actually all we are getting for this month? So regardless of your thoughts and feelings on everything we talked about today, I do look forward to hearing from you all in the comments down below before you leave the video, as I do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around these topics. Go watch the video on screen next if you haven't already. Also, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.